remember the song we just sang, Bill Clark. He was getting on up in the years, but he sang that one day, and he said, uh, you know, I'll be 38 years old my next birthday. He's, oh, maybe that's 83 years old my next birthday. So I was going to use that, but I'll be 66 my next birthday. It don't really matter because I'll still be 66 <laughs> my next birthday. Everybody had a good afternoon, got plenty to eat, all rested up, ready to go again, huh? But it's good to be back this afternoon, trust you had a good evening, just, just a couple of nights we're going. Visitation Tuesday night, if you can come be a part of that. I need, uh, I need a, a, a shorter stature fella to go with me. I need somebody with short legs, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> I had treatment last week, when, when we were out there out running them German Shepherds. <laughs> I don't need to outrun the dog, just outrun the one I'm with. <laughs> and I don't want to hurt Freeman's feelings if I outrun him every time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he might take a fist of that. But just, if you can come out and be with us, uh, and I was telling him in the training union tonight, I heard, on, I heard somebody say, there's no door that you'll knock on that God doesn't love the person on the other side of that door. We got a lot of unchurched folks in, in Fort Payne, Alabama. If you can be a part of that, come out and help us with that on, on Tuesday at 5.30. Remember the youth going to Lake Winnipeg this Saturday. Sign up sheet. Don't forget that. Meet here at the church at 3:30, or you can meet up there at 6. Also, we got some flyers for our fall festival. If you've got some place you can put one of those up, take one of those. If nothing else, remember these on a prayer list. Remember Brother David tonight. Pray for him as he breaks the bread of life. Uplift him always. If nothing else. We'll ask you to come. Ushers, come forward, and we'll receive this afternoon's offering.
Dear Lord God, we just want to thank you and praise you for your love, your mercy, God, your long suffering. Thank you for the opportunity to come and assemble again in this house. God, we just want to uplift you in praise and worship. God, just thank you for the songs they're singing that we might uplift your name and holiness. God, we just pray for our church. Pray for a pastor. Might you take him, use him, anoint him. God, just fill him with your spirit. God, may he impart the word upon us that he, he studied. May we apply it to receptive hearts, receptive ears. May we go out in this community and share it with others. God, I pray you just take this offering and use it for your glory. For it's in the name of Jesus we ask. Amen.
tell you what, I said mentioned 66. I didn't think I'd feel this old when I got 66, but uh, this land here will never grow old, right? All right, if you would stand, let's fellowship for just a moment. Good evening. Hope everybody had a good afternoon. I want to take a little bit of time and just thank you for uh, all the cards and the gifts and uh, just uh, hugs. And thank you for all you do for us. We certainly do appreciate that uh, tonight. We may have a testimony tonight. Hope you do. Share that tonight. Amen. Let your heart stand. Amen. That's right. Let your heart. One else. Amen. Bless your heart. Someone else. If not, you got your Bibles. I want to. I'm going around a little different uh, scripture tonight, but we're going to start out in Proverbs chapter 20. It's hard to find for you. Just look for Psalms. It's a big book. <laughs> it's after it. <laughs> what I want to preach to you tonight and talk about um, is loyalty and faithful, being faithful. And uh this day and time we live in, uh, there's not much to that. Uh, as far as people are concerned, it doesn't seem like. But uh, we're going to look at a few different places in the Bible tonight and just look at that. Uh, uh, you, you will be rewarded one day for your faithfulness. Uh, you're really rewarded some here. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we're all blessed. We talked about it some in the training union tonight, you're blessed where you live at, there is no doubt about that, um, you, you might not have a house even to live in, but you still, you're blessed more than most people in the rest of the world, even if you don't have a home, uh, but most of us do, and uh, we, we're thankful for that, but God blesses us, but I want to read one verse of scripture tonight in Proverbs chapter 20, we're going to look at verse 6, verse 6, it says, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, 
but a faithful man who can find. Let's pray. Our dear, most gracious, and wonderful Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for just our house. We thank you, Lord, for uh, everything that's already been taught and said and sung about tonight. We pray, God, that it'll bring glory and honor to your name. We pray, God, tonight as we look at your word that you just uh, want to lift you up, Lord, and thank you for being faithful, Lord, and being loyal to us. And thank you, Lord, for not coming off the cross, Lord, and that you would uh, complete your course there and, uh, and that that you decided to do from the foundation of the world. We thank you for that tonight. We thank you, Lord, without you, we have no redemption. We have no freedom from sin, but without your shed blood, Lord, in our lives. We thank you for that. We we'll just want to praise you tonight for all you are and who you are and all you're going to do. We pray, God, for those that are lost. We pray, God, for our community, the people in Fort Payne. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just speak to hearts. Help them realize where they're at, Lord, and that this life is not all that there is. We pray, Lord, tonight for your word once again. I pray, Lord, that you just use me for a little while, Lord, and that uh, everything that would bring glory and honor to your precious name. We love you. And just thank you for everything, Jesus. I simply ask all these things in your most sweet and precious name tonight, Lord. Jesus, amen. Amen. So uh, uh, we see tonight, and I wanted to see this one particular verse tonight. It says, most men will proclaim everyone his own, his own goodness. You know, that, that's not hard to find, uh, really. You got people boast about everything that they can do. Uh, and all they'll say they'll do, but uh, the Bible says here in verse 6, but a faithful man who can find. And there's something to you, your and I's uh, faithfulness to the Lord. It's not, uh, you're faithful probably to your job. I'd say most people are. Uh, they'll clock in at a certain time. They may slide in on two wheels and run in the door, uh, but they better be there before 8 or whatever time it is you uh uh, uh, clock in at work, you're faithful. Uh, uh, it may be because of the paycheck you get at the end of the week. It may be something like that. I don't know. Uh, but it's good to love the Lord. Just to love the Lord. Not for His benefits, but because of what He did for us on Calvary. Now, we all sit here, you know, well, uh, it's one thing to love the Lord for everything He does for us. And as I said a while ago, He's blessed all of us. There's no doubt about that. But even if the Lord didn't bless us anymore and said, I'm withholding everything, I'm not shedding out any more blessings, I'm withholding it all till you get to glory, you would still be considered blessed because I have eternal life. Uh, that's it. That's the key. But do we really and understand that we do we love the Lord tonight? And uh, 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 there's some people in the Bible that uh, you're very familiar with that we're going to look at some tonight and that we know that have been loyal and faithful in our scriptures. And we're still some, even after the scriptures were written. Uh, I love D.L. Moody. I love C.H. Spurgeon. Uh, because these men were faithful. They preached the word of God. That's why I look up to. Uh, you can look up, most all of us are familiar with Billy Graham. A man that was faithful his whole life. Uh, uh, we look up to those people. Uh, even the world sees those type of people and understood where they stood uh, upon them. I believe a lost person, I know Billy Graham and himself went and visited many different presidents, and I'm not sure that all of them knew the Lord, but they at least knew where Billy Graham came from. They understood what he stood for, what he, uh, that he trusted in the Lord, and he knew that uh, he was his only way. So I say that because we can all be loyal and faithful in that, that what God has given us tonight. So, God is not looking, He is looking for a man or a woman, don't matter if they're young or old, but He's not looking for someone with great ability. You know, a lot of times we say, well, we need to go to school. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm not educated enough. Uh, uh, well, I don't know enough. I, I don't really know how to preach. I, I don't know how to teach. But what He's really looking for, He's not looking for a great talent. I know we've got great people here that can sing, I brag on them, they sing like birds. Uh, uh, they're just wonderful. They got, we got ladies and probably a few men that can play instruments and they do a wonderful job. Uh, but God didn't call us to do those things. He's wanting somebody to just be faithful. Just to be faithful and loyal to Him. And we see that, and we see that in the lives of some different people tonight. We see it in Moses. 
uh, Moses was referred to in Hebrews 11, uh, uh, talking about him, he refused uh, uh, to be called a son of Pharaoh, but rather chose to suffer the affliction with his people, the Israelites, uh, of God. He chose that, and he become loyal to that. He was loyal and faithful to the Lord that called him. Uh, he, he took him out, he taught him well, he got, him, he got uh, the world out of him. That's the reason that he went 40 years on the backside of a desert. I believe that's the reason that Saul went three years and spent some time over in the, uh, uh, basically in the wilderness, so to speak, with the Lord. Uh, and we, we have to go through our desert times. Uh, the Lord's got to get some, the world out of us so that he can put some of him in us. And I think that's what he was working on with Moses. He taught him to, to trust in him and to be faithful to tonight. And it, it, that's what he's looking for. He's wanting someone to be loyal and faithful tonight. But he, could you talk to Job maybe? Uh, we can see a man that's faithful. He, uh, after everything and calamities that happened to him, he had lost his family, lost everything pretty much that he had, uh, had a wife there, and, uh, uh, but he said, Naked I come into the world, and uh, naked I shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all that sum, in that little verse, he had spoke more faith and more truth than most people have in their entire life. Um, because we read the story of Job and see what a remarkable man that this man of faith had. Even though his wife come in and said, just, just curse God and die. Uh, he said he would not. He would not. He said whether he lost it all, whether uh, he, uh, God slayed him, he would take, he would stand one day and look at the Lord. He trusted him. That's faith. That's being faithful to the Lord. Uh, loyalty is, is Ruth telling their mother-in-law, where thou goest, I will go. Uh, where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. That's found in the first chapter of Ruth. Uh, uh, that's a woman you saw well she was loyal to her mother-in-law yes she was but she was also out of the representation of that she come to know and understand who the true living God was and, and God blessed her for being loyal to your mother-in-law so that's something to tell uh, us that are uh, still got our mother-in-laws or father-in-laws ladies and gentlemen uh, uh, to be loyal be nice to them uh, God rewards that type of thing. He wants us to be loyal and faithful to Him. But tonight we also see uh, Peter and John. We can look it over in Acts chapter 4. You can turn that way if you like tonight. But we're going to look in a couple of verses here. And I think it's verse 17 and verse 20 uh, uh, tonight. And, and uh, Scripture says here, you know, that they are become uh, brought up before the council. They're fixing to be threatened. And it says here in verse 17 that, uh, But that it spread no further among the people, let us strictly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Whose name? Jesus Christ. Uh, but in verse 20, uh, uh, John and Peter said, uh, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That's all God wants you to do. I've said it uh, ever since I started. Uh, your testimony is not any more than what you have seen, what you've heard, and what God has done in your life. Uh, but you are unique and you're special and uh, because of that fact of what God has done for you in your life. God, uh, but he, the, Peter and John were loyal to the Lord. Uh, they, they could only do what God instructed them to do. He went on and he said, is it better for us to serve man or, 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 or God? Uh, are we to... Uh, uh, lie about things just uh, to, to make things easier for us? No, we're to stand on the truth, the truth of the Lord tonight. Uh, and, and we see that. But loyalty is Paul in the prison ready to die for the cause of Christ. That's found in 2 Timothy 4, 7 tonight. And uh, it, it says here in that particular verse, it says, uh, <clears throat> I have fought a good fight and I've finished my course, have kept the faith. That's what uh, Paul said here. What is he talking about? Uh, he has come to the end of, uh, of his life. Uh, he had extremed and fought and desired to be loyal and to do everything. He had talked about himself. He had basically said that uh, let the whole everything go away, but let me cling nothing but to the Lord. 
uh, let it fall to by the wayside everything that consists in life, but let me just have the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's a man of loyalty and faith to the Lord tonight, and, and, and we see that in his life. And I'm glad that Paul was faithful. I'm glad that the Lord allowed him to read, uh, 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 write the New Testament, most of it. I'm glad for the book of Job tonight that every time that we might have some kind of problems that come into our life and seems like everything is, the weight is heavy upon us. You lose loved ones and everything, but then you can always say, I've never been in such a shape as old Job was yet. I don't know that there's many people that have come across that point in their lives yet to where they may love loved ones, but, uh, and I understand that, but the point of it is, is uh, Job lost it all. Uh, everything in this world it was taken away from him, but yet he pleased the Lord by uh, staying faithful to him tonight. That's something to say. That's faithfulness. Uh, 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 we're thankful for Job. I'm thankful for the book of Job. I'm thankful God put it in there so that we can uh, 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 rejoice in that and, and see the uh, 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 encouragement. Encouragement God give us in that. Uh, Moody is known as to say this, that uh, a man asked Moody one time, said, Lord, uh, Moody, the uh, world is getting better. Uh, don't you like it a little better? And he said, I believe the world is getting better uh, only to the sense of one day of destruction. Uh, God has given me a lifeboat. And he has instructed me and told me to save as many as I could. Uh, that is what we are. When we look at the world, it is huge against us. But if you've ever been on a boat or even went by and seen a big boat, you'll see a lifeboat. It is a small vessel compared to that large boat that's in the sea. Uh, but God said just to use your lifeboat to get who you can in there. And D.L. Moody is known to have saved one million, not him, but through his preaching, has saved one million people in the world by driving a little uh, lifeboat up and telling people about the Lord. So it can be done, is what I'm saying tonight. I think I told Brother Justice, we were waiting outside a prayer room tonight. We didn't get there in time. I heard them speaking in there. I told Brother Justice on the way in tonight, I said, uh, that's where the power comes from. I believe that with all my heart. A uh, prayer is the answer to everything in your life. Uh, it's bigger than you are, the things, the circumstances around you. I agree with that. But what we've got to understand is God is bigger than the circumstances. And that if we'll pray to God, He will issue uh, a declaration saying, come and help, and He'll just put your name there. And He might have to send one or two angels. I don't know, but He'll get the job done. And the point of it is, is we've got to pray. Uh, that's where it's at. It's not the preaching. It's not the teaching. Uh, but it's through God's Word and God's uh, uh, ability and His Holy Spirit. And the only way to get that done is through the power of God. He's the one that's able to do these things. Who's able to save there's anyone? Your neighbor? Can you? Uh, you couldn't save yourself. You're just like I was. But the Lord is able. He is a save, able to save to the uttermost. Uh, he'll carry us home one day. There's nothing that can defile that. There's nothing that can bother that. That that God has put in your heart, the Holy Spirit seals, God has ordained it. And it'll be opened up and you'll be carried to the house. Heaven one day. Home we talk about when we sing it in the, uh, in the songs. But, uh, but we see that. Uh, uh, but he's, we also need to be loyal to Christ. To Christ. In Romans 12, 1, he talks about here, he says that, uh, uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The least that you can do is to do what God has called you to do. Uh, uh, what, what can a man give for his own soul? I said that this morning. Uh, if God has called you to do something, why, why is that so hard? Uh, i tell you the hard part. The hard part is you. I'm just going to be honest with you. God doesn't call anybody He doesn't already equip. You understand that? Uh, he's, if He's called somebody to preach, He's got somewhere for you to preach at. If He's done called you to teach, He's done prepared a way for you to preach some, or talk, teach somewhere. 
Do you understand it? If you sing in the choir, he's already prepared a seat for you to be in the choir. Uh, he goes ahead of us and prepares this beforehand. So he equips us to do that. The problem with it is, is can David get out of the way? What will David do? I'm just putting myself there. If I get myself out of the way, what David wants to do and relinquish myself and allow the Lord to work through me and say, here I am, Lord, use me, then it's on. And that's all you can do. Can I preach without the, the uh, Lord? No. Can you sing without the Lord? You might hum a few verses, but it ain't going to do much for me, I'll tell you. As much as pretty as all of y'all sing and everything, it's, not going to, it's more to it when the Holy Spirit gets in it. It thrives down deep in my soul then. I get a better beat. I get a better feeling down deep in my heart um, because I, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And we're connected. And tonight, so we have to be loyal to Christ. We've got to be loyal and faithful to the church. A lot of folks don't like this part. But it's the truth. You flip over them a couple of verses. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, and we'll go on over to Hebrews in a minute. But in a verse 16, I mean uh, chapter 16 and verse 18, it says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now that's the Lord establishing the church. Uh, at the beginning, and he's not basing it, I know the Catholics say, well, they base it on uh, Paul or, or, or Peter. No, it's not based on him. He is establishing it upon the Word of God, upon himself, and it is established that way. But you can also find this over, in, and we'll look at Hebrews 10 tonight, and verse 25. And uh, uh, it says there that, uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much more the, uh, as you see the day approaching. What's that mean exhorting? Encouraging. Uh, uh, you, the house should be full. Uh, really. If you get the thing about it, when you see the day approaching, what's he talking about? The last day. Uh, when you see the world's about to come to an end. Uh, uh, exhort one another. Encourage one another to go. And I, I wanted to bring this out tonight to tell you a couple things. There's nothing wrong with this. I, I was flipping through the channels the other day and, and uh, uh, Sam said, well, uh, uh, it was on gospel. They have gospel singing. I guess it's on PBS. I don't know. Uh, it was Gaither anyway. Sometimes they got different ones on there. But uh, basically he's listening to that. But you know, there's nothing wrong with a couple of things here. And I'm going to point these out. Some places they say, well, we're going to have Bible study at somebody's house this week. Okay. That's fine. Uh, some say, well, television ministry. There's nothing wrong. You can flip something on. Be, I, I would tell you to watch. Be careful who you watch. Uh, uh, but television ministry and everything. So, well, I can, I can live a godly life and sit at home and watch uh, preaching on Sunday mornings. I understand that. I hear people say that a lot. But I want to tell you something. I want to point something out tonight. That Christ did not establish television preaching. Christ did not establish home uh, Bible study. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but God did establish the church. Uh, and the church is where you're supposed to be at. There's something about the church that's just different than listening to preachers. I love Billy Graham. I used to sit in a room a lot at night and I liked him when he was back in the 50s and 60s. He got with it a little bit. I seen some of the old preaching. I like that. I like stuff like that. But it doesn't, it doesn't uh, release me from coming to church. Uh, yeah, I believe that with all my heart. The church is something that's not just where we meet God at, and that is the main thing. Uh, I told a young lady this week that if you're going to church and you're going there for any other reason than to worship the Lord, you're probably going to, to for the wrong reason. You are. Uh, uh, but the point of it is, is uh, we come here because we worship the Lord. I understand that. But I get something out of church. I just don't get out of like what me preaching and I hope that you get more out of it so to speak uh, of what is being preached to you. But I hope uh, that you, it is good, it's nice to see you here. I'd hate just to be preaching to my wife uh, on a Sunday night. Uh, she probably wouldn't like that too much either. Because uh, uh, she knows it's for her. 
uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, the, the point of it is, though, so, oh, but we get something out of church with a fellowship of believers. I love it. Don't you just love to be around other people? I mean, I, my wife gets on, on to me sometimes. I, I have about four phone calls a week. She tells me, you ain't got no friends. And I said, well, that's probably right, because hers stays, it blows up. <laughs> uh, uh, the point of that is, but I really do. I love people. Now, I, I like being by myself. I'm that away. I was, I made that away. But church is a different thing. Church is a different thing. We can carry one another because sometimes people are hurt, painful, lost loved ones, just different aspects of what's going on in church. I don't want you to have to carry that by yourself. And, and if you don't say anything about it, shame on you. Because that's what we're here for. I love you enough that I tell you something bad's going on with me. Tell you in the back where you would never ever say anything about it. You know what I'm saying? In confidence. That's an amazing thing. Love one another. And to be able to know that you ain't in it all by yourself. How does the world go through it? So I think I'll just be all right if I just listen to some preaching at home. The devil has isolated you to thinking that, the, that you don't need anyone but yourself, maybe some guy that's preaching on TV. Nothing wrong with that, but you better be careful. Because if a lot of them start out good, then they get off track and tell you something. And if you don't read your Bible, and you don't get around other uh, believers, you never know if it's the truth or not. You know, so, but just to be loyal to the church. There's something that we get out of it. I hope we put in, is what I'm saying. But we also get out of it. We, 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 we will be in it together. But he also talks about, and the last thing tonight is be loyal to the cause. And we're going to look at two things tonight about being loyal to the cause. First one is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 tonight. And he talks about here in verse 16. The Bible says, For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So, uh, but, uh, so we see that tonight, and we see that, uh, 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 that the cause here, they faint not. And so I want to point out what the cause is, and well, you've got to flip back over to uh, the book of Luke. Hope I ain't going too fast for you. Luke chapter 19 tonight. And this is what the Lord said. If you want to know what the cause is for you being here, or what the cause or of your life is, I'll pick on you just a minute and just use you for a minute. Kenny, I don't know how long you worked at UPS. You may have retired there, and I don't know if they give you a knife, a jacket, or what they did. But you served all that time, and you may have framed it. There's people I know get watches and knives and different things. Is it worth it just to have a nice jacket on the wall? You know what I'm saying? But the cause of eternal life, what, what is our purpose in life? What's the cause? What's that that we faint not? What's the hope that was, is within me? And Christ talks about this in, in this in chapter 9, ver, uh, 19, verse 10. He said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's the whole cause of the whole gospel. That Jesus Christ died on Calvary for a lost and dying world. If you don't have anything else to say in your life, you can always say that I was once lost and Jesus Christ died for me on Calvary and I have eternal life. And you may go in to tell them how that experience happened. And I'm going to tell you, I believe this with all my heart. If you do so that sincerely from your heart, I believe with all my heart the angels in heaven come to a complete stop and say, listen to this guy or listen to this young lady down here talking about our Jesus that sits at the right hand of the Father. They're proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord, something that they already know about, that they've already seen. They've known him from the beginning of being created. Whenever that time was in eternity past that the angels were created, 
they come into existence knowing that he was the Son of God. I believe that he's the Son of God because of what Scripture says. I believe that he's the Son of God because of what the Bible says and that he died on Calvary's cross. I'm not, my eyes have not seen him, but I'm like Job. These eyes will see him one day. I will stand before him one day. I know that because we all stand at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to the judgment part of it because I always feel like I need to do better and we all can do better, seems like. But I'm so thrilled to say. I can stand there and say, yep, I've done all those things, but one thing I've done, that Jesus Christ, I put my faith in Him and He died for me on Calvary's cross. And the Lord Himself will say, I did and so say. And once a debt is paid, it cannot be brought back up again. That's why you're free tonight. That's why the devil may accuse you of doing different things, but all you've got to say is that's under the blood. It's under the blood and sincerely mean it that you repent of your heart and say, Lord, forgive me for all my shortcomings, but you paid the, uh, my sin debt on Calvary's cross. Good idea to remind him that his time is short, and I believe he knows it uh, tonight. But for us to be loyal and faithful, there is a payday. I'm looking forward to it. God's awesome. There is no doubt about that. Uh, he's faithful. And I'm glad that he was faithful. He's more faithful than I was. He's probably, and I know, I know he's more faithful than me, and he's probably more faithful than you are. And I, I don't mean that to sound ugly, but Christ paid it all. He was faithful even unto death. You can picture all you want to, driving some stakes in somebody's arm of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not a thing held him on the cross except you and I. Pure love. He, he said that. In Scripture, he said, I could call two sets of legions to angels down here at any time. He could do it any time he wanted to and said, I've done, I've done with this. I'm not doing it, Father. I, I've had enough, but out of love. And you've got to picture this. He's looking at you and he's looking at me through the moments of time. Every faith that's ever been born, I believe that's what he done. All that time he was on the Calvary's cross. He pictured Adam and Eve. Isaiah, all the way down the line, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all the way down to that last person that's ever going to be born in the world. And then he said, it is finished. I got, I, I paid the debt for you. Tonight, while they come to the instruments, have you been loyal and have you been faithful? That's just something that you will have to answer for yourself. Uh, uh, we all, as I said, come up short sometimes. Uh, uh, in doing that, but a, a, a true born-again Christian will live a godly life. Uh, he'll do his best or her best to live and to do all that Jesus would require us and ask us to do. And it's our, as the scripture says, it's a reasonable servant just to do those things that he had asked us to do. Why you stand to your feet tonight, gentlemen? born today someday must die still God remains forever alive though I choose wrong still God is right though I choose dark
anywhere you go You can find God near Though we live and die His love is real Now His offer stands Yeah.